Hello everyone, this is Wilson Puvula and I'm a solution architect at AWS. In this video, we will deploy SAP S4 HANA application in a highly available cluster across AWS availability zones using AWS Launch Wizard. AWS Launch Wizard provides a wizard-based experience to size, deploy, and configure HANA-based SAP workloads on AWS. AWS Launch Wizard is available at no additional cost. Post-deployment, we will test failover of an SAP application using third-party clustering software. Before we initiate the deployment, let's take a look at this slide to understand how we will use AWS Availability Zones to deploy this workload. We will be deploying these workloads in two private subnets in Availability Zone A and Availability Zone B. After the launch wizard deployment is finished, we would see the S4 HANA application deployed as shown here. The ASCS and ERS nodes will be deployed across Availability Zones, and it will be clustered using a third-party software. And the database is also deployed across availability zones and clustered. The root table is used for routing traffic to these subnets. The sequence of steps for launch wizard are laid out here. It starts with launching all the EC2 instances and configuring the storage. The installation of HANA database is then followed by HANA database backup, which is a prerequisite for HANA system replication setup. Once that is done, cluster configuration of HANA is performed. Then the applications are deployed, and finally, the cluster configuration for application is carried out. All of these steps are performed by Launch Wizard for SAP in less than two hours. Let's go to AWS Console now and navigate to Launch Wizard. Let's click on SAP and click Create Deployment. This screen provides information about the IAM role that lets Launch Wizard create the resources on your behalf. If you need more information, it's available here. Let's click Next. To save time, I have already pre-populated all the fields in another session. So let's switch to that screen and review the parameters. I've named this deployment as Launch Wizard Demo 1. And optionally, you can provide description and any number of tags that you need, such as cost center information. You can have unique configurations for your non-production and production environments. The configuration I selected populates all the network parameters, such as VPC, subnets, and security groups. You can also define encryption requirement for all the block storage. Once the parameters are reviewed, click Next. As we are deploying both application and database, let's leave the selection here as NetWeaver stack on HANA, provide a system ID and user ID for SAP S4 HANA, and let's leave the EBS volume type as default. If you already have a transport domain controller, you can select it from the dropdown. Otherwise, leave the default option as yes. A unique system ID and system number are provided for the database, and default EBS type GP2 will be used for this deployment. Click Next. Since we're deploying a highly available S4 HANA solution, we will select Highly Available Deployment. Then we provide the details for ABAP Central Services. I selected SUSE Linux 15 for SAP as the operating system. If you want any other operating system, you can select it from the dropdown. I've defined unique host names and instance numbers and provided CPU and memory requirements. As you can notice, Launch Wizard also estimates the monthly on-demand cost for this deployment. Follow the same steps for NQ Replication Server as well. Then we move to the DB section where we select the preferred operating system, define host name and site name for our primary and standby databases. A unique overlay IP and the cluster pacemaker tag is provided. This overlay IP will be used to send traffic to the active primary instance. Then the size of the HANA instance is selected from the dropdown. Now we define our requirement for a primary application server. We have more options here to define additional application server and pre and post deployment scripts if required. Let's click Next. Let's leave the selection for software installation as yes. We chose S4 HANA as our application and version as 2020. All the software is already uploaded to S3 bucket and path is provided here. 
A master password and system number for primary application server are provided. All virtual host names and overlay IPs for ASCS and ERS are defined here. And finally, the virtual host name for the database and pacemaker tag for the application are provided. If you need backend agent installed and configured for backing up your HANA database to S3, then you can select the option here. Now let's hit next to review all the parameters we provided to launch wizard. If you need to make any changes, you can use the edit option here. When you're ready, click deploy. I pause the recording for the deployment to finish. Now that the deployment is finished, let's take a look at the logs. You can see the timelines here. The deployment began at 6.26 a.m. and finished 90 minutes later at 7.52, little under two hours. Let's now proceed with application failover testing. Let me switch to a remote desktop here where I have set up the environment already. Let's click on the deployment launch wizard demo one and I can navigate to the deployed resources from Launch Wizard Console. Let's take a look at the deployed resources here. We have cluster nodes for ASCS and ERS running across availability zone A and B. The databases are running across availability zones as well. I've already created an entry for HANA database in my HANA studio. Both my primary and standby databases are running and the replication is active. The IP address of the database matches with our launch wizard deployment. I've also opened an SSH session to ASCS and ERS host, and the IP addresses match the launch wizard deployment. In this failover test, I will simply enforce a migration of ASCS process to ERS host while a user profile is being edited on SAP application server. We will see how user lock is preserved and session integrity is maintained as the application server fails over. The sessions here are displaying active processes in the cluster. You can see the ASCS and ERS services are running across two hosts. Now let's open an SAP session and go to transaction SU01 to modify a user profile. Let me make a change here. Now let's go to SM12T code and confirm a lock is active on the table. As you can see, a lock is active. Now let me simply shut down ASCS host so that the ASCS processes fail over to ERS host. And let's start a stopwatch. You will notice that the ASCS service will now move to the same host as ERS. You can see the services are now moving over and they should become active in a moment. The services are now active. Now let's stop the stopwatch. And it only took about 42 seconds for the failover to finish. Let's take a look at our session and see if a lock is still active. You can see the lock is available. Now let's try to save our change in SU01 and see what happens. The user data is saved and committed. To summarize, in this video, we walked through a launch wizard deployment of an S4 HANA application, and then we failed over an ACS host while a user information was being edited in SU01. The failover took less than a minute and was fully orchestrated via a clustering software. I hope this video was helpful in understanding how the clustered environments behave on AWS and how seamless it is to build highly available application architectures using AWS Launch Wizard service. Thank you.